Any way you want, baby. That's probably a better way. So Tina's laying on her desk at the ticket on her back. <laughs> And she's going to show what people often do incorrectly. Go ahead and put your feet down if you can, Tina. Move, move closer to me. You're fine. This is is she good, great. Webster? Okay. Great on YouTube. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be great on YouTube. She's got pink okay. outfit on, lower body is in white, and shorts. We love these things. Show a crunch and <laughs> what most people are doing wrong. Um, well, first of all, if they're putting their hands behind their head, they're pulling on their neck, their head. And a lot of times I just see people moving their head, and that's all they're doing. And they're just killing the discs in the cervical spine because it compresses on those discs and can create degeneration. So um, what you want, and, and then, I, you know, we've seen, seen it, put the hands under the chin and do it this way. Um, so really either way, and the first comment I get is my neck hurts. So, you know, it's just not the best option. It's just higher risk and less benefit. So people, what people are doing is they're pulling on their head. They're actually straining their neck. They're not getting anything from their abs that they're wishing to get. Also, they'll put one leg up in the air. So what's that doing? It's the same thing, isn't it, Tina? Yeah, I, I think they're thinking that maybe if they put one leg up, it's, well, it, it causes them to contract, to put, push their lower back down to the floor, so maybe they feel it more. Um, but once again, we're talking about working a muscle that's meant to be a stabilizer. So that's how you want to work it, as a stabilizer. This is not using it as a stabilizer. One of the th other things I want to mention about crunch is, it's, it's still a muscle. So when someone says, well, I do a thousand crunches a day, hey, great, how many chest press or push-ups are you doing a day? Well, I only do three sets of 15. What's the difference? <laughs> well, the other idea, too, is, 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 and I know we've said this a million times, that people that do them are thinking if the more they do, the leaner their stomach's going to get and look, and it's going to change how their stomach looks. Your, the purpose of using your abs is, is to train it, to strengthen it, to, to be a protective mechanism for your spine and for functional reasons. If you want to get the fat off your stomach, then you got to do the nutrition and the workouts and all that other stuff. It's so one good. of the things I want to show you, again, if you go to YouTube, put in 21 Day Body Makeover, and you'll see this exercise. The way Tina and I like to do an abdominal exercise, if you are on the ground, is to do something called a reverse trunk flexion. So what she's doing, she's going, this is, this is taking her lower body toward her upper body. All right, and when she goes back down, check this out. Can you see this on camera, Jeremy? Yeah. All right, notice when she goes back down, there's no arch in her back. Okay, she doesn't go back down so far that her knees go further away from her, go ahead and do it, that her back arches. That's low, bad for your lower back. This is actually a very short movement. Go up to my hand only. So she went up about three inches and back down. If you're not used to this exercise, it's actually very hard to do for your abs, and you'll gain good strength with this. Then you can go higher as you get more advanced. And look, she goes more toward the ceiling. So I want you to see how to do a proper way to do abs, an ab crunch, if you will, which is not a crunch. It's reverse trunk flexion when you're in your hotel, when you're at home, you don't feel like being in the gym. You can do this exercise. Try and do a thousand of these. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can do it. A thousand of these all at once without stopping. Can't be done. So good job, Tina. And you want to see Tina on the desk? Go to YouTube, 21 Day Body Makeover, doing her crunches. All right, so let's get back to the All About You show. D uh, Davey, will you pull up uh, Richard, who's on the cell here? Richard, you're on uh, Sports Radio 1310, the ticket on number one, Davey. Number one. There he is. Hey, Rich. Hey, how you doing this morning? Good. Good to hear from you. Yeah, I have a question about uh, carotid artery disease. My wife, who is 45, was just diagnosed a month ago. And uh, we went to the hospital, and she has all been corrected. So my, my questions are, one, how did, how did this happen? And then, two, post... Uh, uh, you know, nutrition and exercise, uh, what what we can have her do, you know, to prevent this from happening again. Well, I'll address the carotid artery disease. Uh, essentially, you have certain areas that are shed water areas in your body that, that if you have diffuse narrowing of, of vessels due to vascular disease throughout your body, um, and, and typically where they're going to manifest themselves is, is the carotid artery or the heart because those, are very, those they, have, they have just uh, anatomic narrowing. So they also, in the carotid artery you have, it goes to, uh, it splits off into a deep and superficial layer and that creates turbulence and that turbulence further irritates the artery and you just get a buildup of plaque there and, 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 and the plaque just gets progressively more occlusive and, and, and it has to be addressed once it gets to a certain degree. See, what I don't think people appreciate is when we're in our, our teens and 20s, we feel invincible. Tina will show you certain exercises that you should do, otherwise the risk outweighs the benefit, and later on you will experience some type of injury or limitation. But when you're in your 20s, maybe even early 30s, you don't want to hear that. You're like, I've been running, jogging forever, I'm fine. Or I've been doing this exercise, pulling down behind my, my neck forever, I'm fine. Well, see me in a year or five years, and then tell me you're fine. 
Nutrition, same thing. Dr. Webster, hit it fast. We've got a couple other people to get to. Yeah, a few things that could, could also lead to this. Um, any, anything that causes inflammation can cause the plaquing in the heart. Anything that, that produces excessive free radicals. So if you're eating a lot of soybean or vegetable oil, uh, fried foods, that could, could cause this. Um, another thing is if you've taken a lot of antibiotics in your life, it wipes out the gut flora and you can't produce vitamin K. A vitamin K deficiency will cause calcification in your arteries. So need to get the gut flora back and or take vitamin K supplementation. David, let's go one call real fast. Let's go to Glenn, number two. You are on Sports Radio 1310, the ticket, Glenn. Hey, George. Quick question. I'm looking to, to, to run that, to, I'm trying to run marathons. I'm, I'm a little bit older now. I'm 38. I uh, used to run a lot when I was younger, but now I'm starting to have knee issues. I was thinking about... Well, I just heard that somewhere. You ever have deja vu? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about using ace bandages, but I just wanted to double check. Am I wasting my time if I have to wear eight bandages to go run all the time? All right, you know what I'm going to do? This is going to be an empowering answer. All right. What do you think? Uh, well, I think that the, uh, overall, being able to do the exercising, you have to, you might have to sacrifice a little bit, so having the support would still allow you for the overall benefit. So if your goal is to run the marathon, I think you should use the bandage. If your goal is to stay healthy and stay away from the knife, I don't think you should run the marathon. That's how I'll answer that. It might not be how you like it, but do you understand where I'm going? I do. I do, but the, how else would I get the, the cardio benefit from the, endur and the endurance from running that far? Mm -hmm. if okay, running. Glenn, you've not listened to this show often, I can tell. Um, we're, we're going to have to... <laughs> We're going to have to share with you at some other time. I encourage you to go to my website, 21daybodymakeover.com. Click on blog and look at all the burst training information. You can also see it on the ticket website under my radio show for the train station fitness show. Everything about burst training. You will become extremely fit, very aerobically fit without doing aerobic training. You do not need to run or perform steady aerobic training to do to be aerobically fit. Okay, do that, get back to me, and let us know how you made out. If you need any more questions about that, call Dr. Webster, 972-735-0707. I'll give the numbers out more again later. Again, it's the All About You show. We'll take a couple more questions. Coming up next, 745 Sports Radio 1352, Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. George B. John, train station fitness show. All About You show. Uh, we'll take a few more calls here. We're kind of all over the place, which is good. I like different things to talk about. Hey, Dave, let's go to uh, Terry on the cell phone. Terry, you are on the ticket. Or not yet, I guess. Dave's going to do a little bit of work back there for us. Or maybe not. Oh, maybe he is. Hey, Terry, how you doing? I'm good, George. How are you? <laughs> we finally got you on. Go ahead. Okay, good. My question is about cellulite. I'm an extremely active 40-year-old, but I have, a, I have cellulite, and I, well, my question is, what can you do to re, uh, reduce the effect of cellulite through nutrition and exercise? And number three, is the presence of cellulite indication of another health issue? Ooh, that's a fantastic mm. question, Terry. Let me ask you this before we go any further. I know Dr. Kevin Light wants to uh, jump in on this. What type of exercising are you doing now? I do. It's a boot camp, so it's strength, and it's also aerobic. Okay, so let's let Dr. Light, medical doctor Kevin Light, jump in on this, and then I know the other uh, two people will jump in also, okay? Real, real difficult problem, and cellulite is, is present in women who are, who are heavy, who are skinny, who are, who are perfectly healthy, and there's really, uh, from a medical perspective, um, and, and this is what I do is cosmetic surgery, uh, cellulite is, is, is very difficult to treat, uh, difficult to impossible to treat. You can improve it. Uh, a lot of the improvements are, are short term. A lot of the treatments that you see out in the market basically camouflage the cellulite, but once the swelling and, and, and the edema go away, after you, that, that is used to, to treat it and, and, and beat the cellulite up, um, it, it, it invariably comes back. Um, I don't know, Jeremy, do you have any nutritional input? So there, there's, there's miles and miles of research on cellulite. It's a very complex problem. There's five or six problems and things going on at one time. Some and, people say that there's a genetic component to it. Would you agree? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it will run. If mom has it, there's a good chance you'll have it, but... Uh, Tina, what do you do for your uh, female clients who complain about it? Because we all know they, that they have it and uh, complain. Well, I mean, you know, my job with them is, is looking at their, their nutrition, making sure they're doing everything possible with their workout and with their nutrition. You know, I mean, I, I mean, again, again, I mean, I've got women that have had a lot of it and I've 
and burst training, you know, worked out really, really hard with them. Got them on, got them on your cleanse, got them on a good eating plan, and they've been able to I have a client that's just dropped about 13% body fat since.